Hello everyone, my name is Otstava and today I present to you the first episode of Do's and Don'ts for PvP in Dark Souls 3. In this first episode, we're going to have a look at infusions. And what are infusions? Infusion is a more advanced form of smithing that infuses an element. Alright, but before we get into how to do infusions right, first we have to find out if we can actually perform them. You see, there are three kinds of weapons and equipment in this game, depending on which upgrading material they require. There are weapons that are upgraded with Titanite scale, weapons that are upgraded with Twinkling Titanite, and then the ones that are upgraded with regular Titanite. So the first issue we'll find is that the Titanite scale weapons, they just can't be infused or buffed at all. You wanted to <laughs> get the crystal magic weapon on your crystal rapier? Oh uh, no, that, that would be way too powerful. God forbid you want to infuse that tailbone dagger or something, we, we couldn't have that, so yeah. If you pick one of these weapons, uh, infusions, you just don't have to worry about. Moving on, Twinkling Titanite weapons cannot be infused either. But hey, it's it's not all bad news, you know. Um, this time you can actually use buffs on them. On three of them anyway. So that leaves us with the regular Titanite weapons. These can be infused and buffed. Yay! Except not always. Um, there's a small list of exceptions. To find out if your weapon is actually infusible, you have to ask yourself a few questions. Is it a bow or a crossbow? Then it's uninfusible. Is it a catalyst for spells? You can't infuse it either. Does it have a pre-existing split damage? Uh, then chances are that you can't infuse it either. But that's not even the end of it. If your weapon has any useless effect, like recovering a tiny bit of focus points every time you land a hit, then it can't be infused either. That would be unfair. Okay, so now that we've cleared which weapons we cannot infuse, let's get on with the ones that we can infuse. There should be like three or four of them in the entire game. Since they're pretty similar, we're going to start with bleed and poison infusions. Are they worth it? Oh, sure. If your religion forbids the use of resins, they are great. If not, they're fucking useless. Poison and bleed infusions lower physical damage. And the thing is, using a Carthus Rouge or a Rotten Pine Resin is always preferable to having an infused weapon. Even the weapons with innate bleed and poison damage don't get any special treatment. Those can already be buffed, so just use a resin on them and don't infuse them. Also, using them on shields does fucking nothing. Next up, fire and deep infusions. These split damage 50-50 between physical and the respective element, and they also remove scaling completely. Other than low level PvE, these are fucking worthless. A funny thing though, they are the only infusions in the entire game that can actually improve the elemental resistances of your shield. Uh, however, most of the shields with high elemental resistances, like the Dragon Crest shield, are actually upgraded with Twinkling Titanite, and as we covered earlier, they just can't be infused, so yeah. I mean, you can always try the deep infused Lothric Knight Great Shield, or a fire-infused Black Iron Great Shield. I don't think anyone has ever done that before, so who knows, maybe you'll get a hidden trophy or something. Moving on, we find the Blessed and Simple Infusions. These are pretty straightforward. Um, they make you lose a little bit of damage to get health or focus over time, except it's not a little bit of damage, it's actually a lot of fucking damage, but still. The regeneration effect also works if you slap this into a shield or an offhand weapon, so just do that instead. No reason to have your main weapon infused with this piece of crap gem. And we've reached the four elemental gems, Lightning, Crystal, Chaos and Dark. They split damage to their respective types and they add scaling too. Some weapons like the Dark Sword get an S scaling with these infusions, but don't be fooled, that S stands for Suck Stick. Since infusing weapons with these gems makes them unbuffable, they are all fucking worthless. However, if you're a smartass, like me, you're probably gonna think that perhaps some weapons could benefit from split damage and an improved scaling. Uh, take the Saint's Biden, for instance. Um, it's a weapon with an innate D in faith scaling. If a Lightning Waiting Spear gets an S in scaling, maybe this will get like, uh, like a double S or something, right? Uh, nope, it gets a C in scaling. Elemental infusions make no sense. And hey, just to put the nail in the coffin, Putting these on shields doesn't make them resist elements any better. Final verdict, they suck, don't use them ever. And so we're left with these five, which I call the physical infusions. Depending on your stats and the weapon of your choice, you'll want to use one or the other, but they have something in common. 
they don't split damage and they all allow you to use spell buffs and resin afterwards. If you're dex oriented, go sharp, strength oriented, go heavy. If you use both, go refine. If you're going for minimum stats, choose raw. If you have minimum stats and high luck, go hollow. And that's it. So yeah, just remember, if the infusion material is black, don't hold back. If it's anything else, you might as well just go. You know what, guys? I, I think I owe you all an apology. Maybe I've taken this whole infusion thing too seriously. Uh, last night I tried a build with a fire infused uh, Drake Blood Greatsword, and I must say, uh, I did pretty well. Yep, yeah, it just goes to show anything can be viable in this game. Anything at all.